good morning. Monday morning, we got a rain last night. I don't even know how much rain, but enough that it made it pretty messy around the job site. The guys are here. As you can see, they're stripping forms. You can see they've brought their outside wall forms around to this side. So they're gonna get ready to set them and get ready to pour this other, this other half. Now the other half won't take quite as long because the center wall is done. And one thing I wanted to take a minute and show you is these little sections right here. That's just styrofoam and they put that in the form and they'll knock those out of there. And what that's for is when this is all done and we've got pigs in there and there's manure in this pit and it's filling up. When we go to pump that manure out, one year we will set our pumps and we will stir this half and we'll load out of this half. And the next year we'll stir and pump out of the other half. And these flow throughs are so that when we're pumping from one side or the other, the manure equalizes. So it stays at the same level because even though this is a 10 inch wall and it's full of rebar and it's anchored to the floor and all that, you have an unbelievable amount of weight there if you did not have those flow throughs. So if, if you didn't have those and you just pumped all the manure out of this side, there's no guarantee that that wall would not bow or buckle or crack or whatever. So that's what those flow throughs are for. You can also see the rebar sticking up above that center wall. That is the top wall. There'll be a four foot top wall, just like what you see there. That's the, that's the end wall. The center gates will anchor to that wall. And on the other side, I can show you the four foot wall on the outside wall is already poured. And I'll show you that in a minute. Anyway, that's your morning update. What's going on everybody? It's a real cold morning. I got my stocking cap on. This will be the first time I wore my stocking cap all year. I saw my dad had his on, so I said, you know, I'm gonna go with the old man's judgment and put mine on as well, and I'm glad that I did. Today, we're gonna continue corn harvest 2020. We're gonna head over to our south cornfield over here. We are a little skeptical on how it's gonna perform. This stuff over here, averaging about two, 200 and then we were doing good over there, but the moisture got too high, so we stopped over there. So today we're gonna try this out and see where we get. Before we get started, we gotta get the auger in the right spot because we took this auger down to our bean bins, and now we gotta take them back up to our corn bins. They were a little close to the barn. Just a little close to the barn. Would have been nice to have all this done when it was still sunny and instead of 50. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. It's a great day. Why? Because I found a pair of ice trucks that got covered up in a pile of corn that I wouldn't have found until I mowed. It was the lawn mower. All we need now is lots of corn. I don't know if we're going to get it, corn on corn, but we'll find out here in a little bit. We just took the ends off, so we got the Bessler blades finally for our Bessler, so we're gonna go ahead and unload them while David's taking these ends off. Oh boy. A lot more blades fell out than I thought. Between all the trips to the new hog building site with a three inch rock, I knew there was gonna be some blades out of the pallet, but I didn't know how many. There was a good amount, as you guys can see there. Hopefully they can stay on this pallet. I'm just glad that we got these out of Sawyer's truck while they still had black paint on them because usually if something goes into Sawyer's truck, it either never comes out or it completely like disintegrates. Like it's kind of like, it's kind of like a mini biodome. You put stuff in there to experiment to see how long it takes to break down in nature. 
But we got them and they're still painted, so. Look both ways, kids. Look both ways. Dad sure does love his John Deere class. He lives his car days that way. So what I'm gonna do is take this wagon down there, let him fill up on me, and then that'll probably be a full load and I'll dump the first load of the day and uh, we'll see how we get along. about 5,500 bushels. It's a 9,000 bushel bin, but when you're drying corn, it's really hard to put push heat up through your corn if you fill it all the way to the top. So you don't want to fill your drying bin all the way to the top because you want that heat to push through the corn and up. And then once it's dry enough, what you hear right now is it's the transfer, the transfer, transferring the corn that's dry enough into our uh, big bin, that's a 26,000 bushel bin. So as it's drying, it's the big bend where we store most of our corn at. Each print wagon that we have is about 600 bushels. So, you know, we probably put in around 4,000 bushels total now, probably three more wagon pulls, and we should be probably done for the day. Last load of corn is done for the day. Bin is filled up to about 5,500 to 6,000 bushels. We're gonna let it dry overnight. We're gonna fill up the wagons one last time. Good time to end the day, because it just started right now. Good afternoon guys, it's the next day. David went ahead and filled all the wagons up full of corn last night to finish, so that way today, when we transfer enough corn over to the big bin, we'll have some room to put the corn that's in the wagon into the drying bin. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now. Dad always sets the steering wheel so damn low, so I always have to adjust it. I don't know, he's a little bit of a shorty, so I gotta, we always gotta mess around with the wheel a little bit. And every time I get it, I set it high, and every time he gets in it, he sets it low. We just need to get a four wheel drive tractor, and that could be my tractor, and then this tractor can just be dad's tractor. I like that plan. That's a lot better. That way, our steering wheels never get messed up. We got about 150 total acres left beans and corn. I don't know if we'll try beans next or corn depending on you know the weather and all that stuff but getting closer to the end. Getting closer to the end. Okay so we climbed down into this half. This this half is done as far as the pit goes and this is what it looks like when the concrete's cured out and all the forms are off. These these columns Next week, the Slat Company, Custom Precast out of Cascade, Iowa, they're gonna be here and they're gonna set slats and beams. So there'll be four rows of concrete beams that sit on top of these columns. So each column will have two beams that meet on them and there'll be four rows of those. And then they will set gang slats, we call them, and the slats are four foot wide and 10 foot long. So one gang will span this distance, and so there'll be one, two, three, four, there'll be five, five slats wide, and then the full length of this. So as you guys can see, this is one 1200 room, and then over here, this is the other 1200 room. So this is finished. Today, they're gonna finish this side. They're gonna pour all the concrete to fill these forms up, and then they'll strip it all, and it'll look exactly like this is. And then Monday and Tuesday of next week, they'll come and they'll start laying slats and all that good stuff. This is the cleanest that this will ever be. This right now, this is just like if you poured somebody's basement, um, but it won't be long and it won't look nice and white and it sure won't smell like fresh, clean air.